What the f How the f did she get out of those cuffs? Huh? Horror movies have evolved over the years, and it has never been as gory and violent as they have been now, and often so constantly. I was wondering when you were finally gonna show. You sure took your time, though. Twenty twenty four is yet to deliver us many more great horror films, but for now, there are a few that have either genuinely traumatized their audience or taken them to a land where the fear is of the unknown. Here are some of the best horror movies of twenty twenty four that have already been released digitally, so you can go and watch them if you want. Oh, ah, ah, ah. What color are my eyes? Abigail. A group of criminals plan to kidnap a little girl from a rich family for a ransom of $50 million. After they succeed in the plan of abducting they take the girl to a mansion and settle in. Joey, from the group, who seems to be the kindest among all the others has the job of keeping the girl comfortable. In the meantime I'm here to keep you safe and comfortable. But, as it turns out the girl barely needs any comfort for she is a vampire, and it is them who will be in need of comfort. Listen, little lady, or ma'am, whatever, we're very sorry. Abigail is one of the most popular horror movies of this year. It has a very simple way of storytelling that can grip almost any audience. The performances or the writing though may not be very special, but the concept and the direction by Matt Bettinelli Alpin and Tyler Gillett, who have given movies such as Scream 6 and Ready or Not, are praiseworthy. This is not quite a scary horror movie. It is almost a horror comedy. With the character of Kevin Durand as Peter and Catherine Newton as Sammy, it delivers some good comical moments. Am I gonna turn into a vampire? Maybe. However, it does not fail to shock its audience often either. The transition of Alicia Weir to an ages-old vampire is sometimes very scary to look at. You're really good at pretending to be a little girl. Thank you. I've had a few centuries of experience. The use of bloodshed and violence is also done in a very modest way being never too much or never too little. Overall, Abigail is most certainly the best popcorn horror of this year so far that has been released online. It takes its audience on a ride for a good hundred minutes. Joey? Yeah. I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. Immaculate. Immaculate is the story of a woman named Cecilia who has decided to become a nun and shifts to an Italian convent. She lives a life of celibacy and never had sex in her life. However, when she becomes pregnant everyone is shocked, including her. After a good deal of inspection, the church community starts to think that it may be the resurrection of Jesus Christ about to happen through her. Therefore they start treating her as Mother Mary but this special treatment only put her in additional trouble. Now, Cecilia has to find out the truth behind her unnatural pregnancy inside a place that seems to harbor vicious secrets. Stop! Blessed no. are the meek. No, 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 please. With a fine performance from Sydney Sweeney, Immaculate carries a very linear story throughout. Although it may be the weakest pick in this list, the simplistic storytelling is approachable to most viewers. It engages its audience with its catchy thrill and keeps the suspense growing till the end. The violence and shocking moments are woven with intricacy. While nuns have become a popular prop in horror movies since The Conjuring, Immaculate is another fine addition and most certainly one of the finest among the others. The horror here is not of the supernatural but of something completely bizarre. The audience can call it batshit crazy but it's a genuinely fun watch with very little of its time wasted. The cinematography and direction are worthy of praise. Sydney Sweeney, who has lately been in many versatile roles has given this character its justice, and no wonder the childbirth screaming is fascinating. In a violent nature, a group of young adults are out on a trip in a jungle and they find a necklace in the middle of nowhere hanging upon a pole. As they take it away there rises a wild man, wounded and grisly to search for the chain because it was his mother's. But taking it back is not his sole purpose. He goes on a rampage to ferociously murder each one of them to get back possession of his most valuable thing. 
Shudder, the streaming site that is gaining its popularity more and more is truly re-evaluating the genre of horror, and in a violent nature is one of its finest explorations woven by Chris Nash. This is definitely not a movie for everyone, but the ones who want to explore the genre of horror as far as possible. In a way, it goes beyond almost all the other disturbing films that have ever been made. It has an excellent pace, shot from the point of view of a video game mostly that gives a whole new level of anxiety and trauma waiting and waiting for the terrible outcomes that one can only imagine if they see it. What? Say something! I didn't do anything to you! This may feel a bit repetitive from time to time, but it quickly escalates into a whole different level of horror in its third act making you more anticipated of what is to come. But, most of all the ending is not as unsettling as the whole film is and in a way gives a breath of fresh air. Overall, in a violent nature, as the title suggests is a genuinely disturbing film but at the same time very gripping if you have the attention and interest for a true horror experience. And, the film is not character based, so there is no matter whether the performances were great but the direction was truly impeccable, making it worthy of a fine pick among the best horror movies of 2024. That looks like the best book ever. Yeah, it is. That's like the TV show, right? The Pink of Pink? I saw the TV glow. What do we imagine when a horror movie is not made to make you fear any unnatural stuff, but the very nature of the human psyche? I saw the TV glow is a film solely about the fear of not knowing who you really are. It is a film about the uncanny nature of personal dilemma, and feeling unknown and incomplete in one's own self. I know there's something wrong with me. It is the story of Owen and Maddie, whose relationship develops centering on their mutual love of a television show called The Pink Opaque. Owen is a complex guy with an eerie relationship with his father and lacks any interest in anything other than TV shows. What about you? Do you like girls? I think that I like TV shows. Maddie is a bit hyperactive and intense, though not confused about her identity but has some absurd ideas about the show. Do you ever feel like you're narrating your own life, watching it play in front of you? like an episode of television. She wants to run away from her home and tries to include Owen, but Owen is scared of her uncanny nature and refuses to leave. I don't want to leave my home. However, when Maddie leaves alone herself, the show also eventually gets cancelled. A genuine oddball of a horror film, I saw the TV glow is visually gorgeous, with its pink color palette and extraordinary use of lighting and camera. The performances are beautiful both by Justice Smith and Bridget Lundy Payne. Their chemistry as two friends with no desire for one another but simply with a shared love for a show is very sterling. I like girls, you know that, right? I'm not into boys. I wasn't... I was, I was, totally, that's... It is a psychological horror mostly centered on character studies. It carries no jump scares and very few freakish moments. But, what it does though is take its audience on an emotionally fearful journey through an unknown road. The number of audiences who can connect with it will find an ethereal feeling through this cosmic horror that is one hell of a movie from the present year. Late Night with the Devil The spirit needs to talk to you! Who are you?! Okay, folks, just our old park hands acting up. Probably the finest of this year so far, Late Night with the Devil was first released in 2023 at the South by Southwest Film Festival and received a lot of critical acclaim. Later, it was released to many other festivals and finally came into theater in 2024. It is a movie that rediscovers the genre of horror with the concept of a screen under the screen. In 1971, a popular reality show called The Night Owl was hosted by Jack Delroy. Jack had lost his wife and it affected his show in a bad way. After a year, he tries to to get things back on track and plans for a Halloween special bringing real-life preachers and so on. However, what seemed to be a show for fun soon turned slowly into a menacing experience. But, Jack barely pays attention to it and keeps going on as further as possible only for the sake of audience retention. It is without a doubt, a completely unique approach to a horror movie. It doesn't rush into anything but so patiently builds the situation towards the horrifying climax. Needless to say, it has outstanding performances making it so watchable and successfully giving a very authentic experience of watching a a true TV show where things go horribly wrong. Um, can you get some help here? No! It copies the style of a general reality show too well. David Dasmalchian has performed mostly in small roles, and this was his breakthrough as a lead performer. We've got an incredible show lined up for you tonight as we celebrate all of the fiendish fun of Halloween. There is no doubt how well he has embraced the persona of an average reality show host. The way it takes itself to places with every new character is fascinating to watch, with obviously the character of Ingrid Torelli as Lily delivering the biggest shock. Lily, so pleased that you could join us today. Thank you, Mr. Delroy. I'm so glad you could join us too.
<laughs> now, Lily, um, you don't have to look at the camera. You can actually talk <laughs> directly to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be silly. Overall, Late Night with the Devil is exceptional in blending reality with fiction giving it almost a documentary-like feeling, and a successor of the found footage horror film style. He's here, isn't he? Good to see you again, Jack. The First Omen The First Omen, in many ways, is similar to Immaculate, a tale of a nun newly in a church that is hiding a lot of mess inside it, but this is very much the better version of Immaculate. It is a beautifully shot and well-directed portrayal of a good-fashioned horror. Margaret is an American woman who goes to Rome to become a nun, in 1971 amidst left-wing protests. However, as one may imagine, living as a nun is not very restricted for she goes out to a disco with her roommate in the middle of the night and has fun with two men. However, things turn bad as Margaret meets Carlita, who often has visions and is subjected to mistreatment from the others. It is said that bad things will keep happening around Carlita, but Margaret doesn't worry about it. The next thing that happens is that another nun Angelica kills herself, and since then things only get worse. Margaret can't help but try to find out the truth only to fall prey as a victim. Nell Tiger Free as Margaret delivers a very compelling performance, and alongside her, the others are great as well under the gorgeous visuals. The film is made as the prequel to the 1976 film The Omen, which received a lot of praise and appreciation. The film has a very complex plotline. Even though the horror worms may consider this predictable they cannot deny the directional excellence that it possesses. Despite its conventional storyline, it grips its audience throughout. Its grim atmosphere and occasional gore and violence can shock the viewer to a certain extent. So that was all for this video. Check some other videos of this channel and subscribe for more content such as this. Thanks for watching.